Okay, so, so let, me, let me start, okay? Maybe I'll, I'll begin by reminding you uh, last week material. So last week we discussed convex localization and what was the idea? The idea was something along these lines. So we begin with some, some convex set K in Rn. And in, in Rn, if you take a hyperplane H and bisect your convex body with this hyperplane, then it divides the convex set into two parts and each of them is again convex, okay? So, so this is nice that in Rn we have so many hyperplanes. This is also true in, 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 in Sn and in the Hn, in, in symmetric spaces. You can apply by sections and, and, and still remain with a convex set if you begin with a convex set. And the idea is that there is lots of freedom in, in, in this bisection and uh, you can use this freedom in order to solve some equations. And if you do this recursively, you obtain a partition of your convex set, say in the L step, after L steps, you get maybe two to the L, okay, two to the L convex sets. And, and these things, the, the set that you obtain would be uh, approximately one dimensional, say in some applications, we saw two applications, would be approximately one dimensional, so, so like needles or, or K dimensional, which we call pancakes approximately. And we use the free in order to solve some equations. For example, we require that, um, um, all certain inter certain functions is integral zero on each of these needles, or it requires that certain function is the same value on all of these needles. This was the technique. And just to, to remind you, so what, one application that we had was we had the, the, the pain one million inequality and we had the, the Gromov waste inequality. Just to remind you, uh, maybe I'd throw it on the sphere. Um, the proof is not that different. Um, so the, the, the statement is as follows. So if you have uh, 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 some continuous function from the sphere to RK, K is at most N. Uh, okay, continuous, that's the only important thing. Then there is a large fiber. Then there exists some value T, such that if you look at the fiber where F equals T, then it's for any enlargement, it has larger volume. This is the epsilon, epsilon neighborhood. It's larger volume than what you get if you enlarge the um, sphere of co-dimension K. Okay, this was uh, Gauss's inequality. We put in the Gaussian case and, and the, the, the idea of the proof was to obtain pancakes so that um, if I look, so each pancake had something we call the center. And what we required is that uh, F of the center of the pancake was the same for all of them. Pancake uh, I does not depend on I. This was what we required. In other words, it means that if you look at the level set, so if, if this is T, then the level set L passes through the center of all of the pancakes. And each of these pancakes is a more low concave than the Gaussian, or in this case, more uh, spheric, more um, sine concave, more, more as, a CD, as a curvature dimension condition larger than that of the sphere. This means that its enlargement would be at least what you get for the sphere. This, this was a, a, a roughly, um, roughly the idea. Um, one thing, okay, just to, to, to emphasize, um, Everything was, this was just a finite process. We stopped at the finite L each time and we had some parameter delta. Okay, so we, we, we looked at delta needles always, or pancakes uh, for, for delta, which is a positive number. Right, that's what we did and it was good enough for us. Somehow I didn't, I, maybe I waved some hand that you can take delta to zero, but it was good enough to have a, a partition into objects that are nearly one dimensional up to some error delta and, and we work with that and obtain the inequality, the inequality at the end. Uh, but still you may ask, um, is there some limit object? So can you get, um, can you get delta exactly zero? So I really want to have a clean partition of my 
my domain, my convex set into segments, for example. So that all of these nice properties are, 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 are um, preserved. So the answer uh, is, is say, uh, okay, say yes in the case uh, when um, the functionals that we equate, okay, so was some functional, I call this functional, I need to remember, it was I of K or something, I of the, okay. So when, when, when this functional is additive or, in a, okay, let me give you an example. So if, if you don't remember, so it means that for instance, suppose that we have, um, we work with some um, mu, some local cave measure on, on so it's mu is some local cave measure on K. Actually, no, not look, uh, yeah, okay, look if measure on K, maybe the Lebesgue measure. And we know that the integral of F V mu is zero. Then the bisection process was very, at a very recursive nature, right? I mean, we bisected that the integral of F was zero in each piece. Then again, bisected again, the integral is zero in each piece. So the partitions, it's, it's recursive, there is a recursion here and, and the partitions refine each other, are more and more refined. In this case, uh, it's not always the case. In the very nonlinear functional here, that's not true. I cannot tell you the partitions, there is a sequence. But here there is a sequence of partition more and more refined. So you, with a bit of measure theory, you can expect that there is a limit object. This is indeed uh, uh, true. This was the, the details are explained in, in some paper of Aleska from, from 98. Um, the reference is in the, will be in the lecture notes. So, what is the limit object? So if you bisect again, 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 what would you obtain? So first of all, you obtain a partition of K into segments. Let me denote them by K omega. So omega is in some space of segments. Okay, these are just uh, segments with one exception that, that, that including singletons. So for us today, a singleton is a legitimate uh, segment. Okay, so so let's make some partition. No delta, delta is zero. These are exact segments. Uh, and second, you know that you cannot condition a measure on a set of measure zero, but if you have a measurable partition into a set of measure zero, then you have conditional probabilities of this integration of measure. This is just follows from the fact that you have a partition to a set of measure zero. So we have this integration of me measure. All conditional probabilities. So this means that uh, you can write the original measure mu as a kind of average of measures where each of them is supported on a segment. So the measure of mu is the integral over the space of segments, which I call omega, of a measure of mu omega, which that will be supported on, on, on the interval omega, with respect to some uh, um, some way to average these segments. What, what is the meaning of this formula? It means that this means that um, for any measurable set A, the measure of the set A. So if this is the set A, then the measure of the set A is the average, like Fubini is the average of the measures of it, it, its intersection with i. So this, this is the integral of, of mu i of a, a mu omega uh, i. Uh, segments, but not lines. Uh, can they be lines? Yeah. In segments, rays, and lines. Singletons, rays, and lines. Oh. If k is comp uh, did they assume k compact? No, no, yeah, that could be lines, sure. Yeah. Um, a set contained, a connected set in an affine one dimensional space. No. No, this is just. Uh, so, mu, let's say mu, mu, let's make you, if you, if you let's make you mu a local probability measure, maybe that would make you feel more comfortable. That's fine. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, 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 all right, uh, okay. So that's the meaning of, 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 of this integration and, and uh, each mu omega 
is supported in the segment or line or way um, in k omega. And now, since the motor on a segment, you can say that if you can look at its density with respect to this segment, and this density will be log concave. Why? Because this would be the limit in the space of partitions. If you partition again, 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 each piece you have convex sets, then you have the weak limit of, of uniform original convex set. And we said that log concavity is the stable property. If you have segments that, let's say, that the needles shrink this way, you will not get the uniform measure on the segment, but some measure with the density on the segment, right? So, but it will still be log concave. So, uh, it's log concave. And if you remember, we said that uh, the integral on each piece was zero, so this property is retaining the limit. So, for each piece, uh, okay, I'm gonna, for each piece, uh, 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 integral zero. Okay, so 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 this is uh, this is the limit object. Let me discuss because maybe let just few examples. Um, just for this delinear composition, so you wouldn't maybe maybe it's um, okay. These are called delinear compositions, and the segments are needles. Um, just really the most simple examples. Um, so first of all, the, the usual Fubini theorem. So let's take k to be I don't know the square zero one. This is just the square, and and let's take uh, this partition. Okay, so k. Uh, y will be just this interval. How does the disintegration measure look in this case? So it looks like, I mean, it's just the big measure of d mu of y to the uh, lambda is just one. I mean, this is just the big measure on each interval. And by Fubini, if you average these measures, then you get the full measure. Second case is polar coordinates, which you also probably know. In this case, the partition is into Radi from the set is a circle, and this is the partition. Maybe the, maybe you rest the origin, and make it a single tone. I mean, let's not think about the oh, okay. The origin is out, but it's a different separate element which is a single tone. Okay. In this case, um, what would be what would be the disintegration? In this case, as you see, the measure would not be uniform on each of these pieces. If R is the parameter here, then mu d omega to d R will be, the new omega will be something like RDR. The density would grow by polar integration. You also need to put some, some this Jacobian factor, which is R. So here, this, this is the, the measure you get on it. What? What? Slowly. Is it, you ask about different yeah, examples? Polar except for R and theta in the other direction. Is that not it? Polar except for? Do R and theta in the opposite direction. Do what? The segments are like, can, can your segments, you know, be like circles approximately? approximately segments are circles? What what, 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 what? So you want other, a third example? Am I, am I right? Something like polar except do R and theta in the opposite. Like this is not allowed. This, at the parameterization in this direction? Okay, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. Segment, segment. Okay. Ryan, I don't allow anything. I don't allow. No, you can have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Concentric hexagons. Yeah. Okay. But then you can take a limit, right? Like what number of sides? So this, this is a, yeah. That's a measure. Yeah, yeah. That's true. You have Lebeg here, right? Because of these things. Yeah, okay. Somehow, like, right, that, that's just the bag. You're allowed to have n yeah. No, no, not only segments. So for me, I don't have a hexagon. I have six segments. Okay, particularly two segments. So hexagon is six segments from separate segments. Okay. And of course, here you get the bag on each of them, right? It's just parallel. So nothing, nothing fancy happening. Oh, okay. But here you get RDR. Here you get an interesting Jacobian factor, and the function R is low concave. If you look at its logarithm, it's a concave function in zero infinity. It would be quite embarrassing if it wasn't. It would mean that, okay, yeah, so it's not okay. More questions about what I mean by needle decomposition and disintegration of measure? Okay, so there is. You care a lot about like actually the linear part. Like you don't want any other curve. You want linear only. Yeah, yeah. I, allow, I would allow geodesics in some Riemann manifold, for example, or some Finster manifold also. Geodesic I would allow if that would help you. So if you want these curves, find me a metric. For which these are the geodesics, and then we could work with that. 
and actually, okay. Um, all right, so, so yeah, so that's, okay, so this is a convex localization, and this picture is similar, um, okay, it's similar to a, a, a picture which appears in, in this business. Okay, so there is a similar construction in optimal transport. Uh, so let me briefly review, let, let's have some quick review of, of optimal transport in, with the Monge cost. So what is optimal transport? Okay, so we have two measures this time. Absolute continuous probability measures. Um, new, new one and new two in RN. Okay, so these are just some, let me, I mean, new one is, uh, is this density and the new three, two would be something else. Okay, and, and these are, the total integral is one. These are probability uh, measures. And you can transport one to the other. Okay, so there is, you can find maps, there are maps. They call it, yeah, okay. There are maps that push forward one, one measure to the other, which means that if you take a little element here and you uh, pull it back, it is the same measure here and here, okay? And what Monge suggested was to, to look at the optimal map. What is the optimal what? The one that is the cheapest, the one that moves point as little as possible. Okay, suppose that it costs money to move points. Um, then Monge wanted to look at the infimum of all ways to push forward one measure to the other. Of the cost, what is the cost? Suppose that you the point X goes to SX, well, you pay the distance between these two points. Okay, and for one, if you want a non, it's fine to take also other types of distances. If you want some distances where you do this, this will also be fine, but let's stick to the Euclidean distance for, just for now. Although it play, plays really no role. With respect to this original measure. Okay, so this is the cost that you want to pay. If you move this point here, you point the distance and you want to minimize this cost. Some problem from the 18th century, but here is a nice heuristic by Monge. from 1781, and this is the following heuristics for, to, for the optimal T. Uh, uh, the segments, if I look at the segments from X to T of X, okay, where X ranges over the support of mu one, all of these segments from X to X goes to T of X, I look at the segment, then these segments do not intersect unless they overlap. No, no. So if you, I don't know, yeah, yeah, so, 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 the infinite dimensional space of, so you just, in our ends are even in R, even in one dimension, you want if you want to transport one density to the other, okay? Let's look at the quantiles, you know, one percent, two percent, etc. And so you need to move this segment to that se to the one percent there. And you have many ways to do it, and you can make with permutation. Any permutation of these things would would work. Okay? There are many many ways to transport one measure to the other. Okay, just think about, I don't know, the two halves. You can switch the two halves, right? And, and do something in each of the recursive oh. way. It, ah, it doesn't, no, no, right. No, S doesn't need to be continuous. That's true. Yeah, even continuous maps are many, many infinite, in dimension two and above, even continuous are, are huge infinite dimensional space. There are many, many ways to transport one measure to the other. Okay, but one of them is, I mean, not just one. There is an optimal map, and we'll see one. And the interesting claim by, by Monge, which is, interesting for our purposes of studying convex set is that they, these segments do not seem to intersect, which sounds pretty strange. So let's, let us explain why is it true. Um, so this just follows actually by the triangle inequality. Let's see. So suppose that 
the optimal map uh, uh, maps x to uh, t of x, and it maps y to t of y. And suppose that against what we claim in suppose the contradiction that these segments do intersect like that. Okay, what does it mean uh, that this is a transport map? It means that there is a little piece of volume here, some, some set of small size that is mapped to here, this point, and there is some little piece here that is mapped to this piece, and the measures, this is the same measure this, this is the measure this. That's at least intuitively, this is what it means. And what does it mean that it is optimal? It means that this map is better than if you do the other way around. So if you try to move this area element to T of Y and this area element to T of Y, it would mean that the sum of this thing plus this thing should be larger than this thing plus this thing. However, this is just false because by triangular inequality, this is cheaper than these things. And, and, and that piece is cheaper than this thing. So if the segment intersect, then it's not optimal. You just switch them, it will be cheaper. We'll move this thing here and move this point there. Okay. There is a measure, to, yeah, this is 1781, measures were not existing, there was no limits, there was no epsilon and delta in the, the okay, this is a different time. But yeah, the, this, this is a paper that you could look at and it was translated to, to English by Cayley in, in the 19th century. Not translated, reviewed by Cayley. Yeah, it's any question. It, there are ways to make it rigorous, yes. Okay, so this is the, the explanation of, 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 of non-juristics and, and there is a famous riddle uh, that many people, saw so it when they were, I don't know, 15 or something. And that's the following riddle. So if you have 50 points in the plane, which are red, 50 points, which are blue, and with your general position, and you want um, to match them, find the matching so that the segment connecting them do not intersect, prove that such a matching exists. Okay, and, 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 and I would not solve this riddle for you, but you have all, you, you received a very good hint for that. Okay, um, so this is, this is the heuristic by, 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 by Monge. Um, more questions? Um, okay, so now let's discuss the, the relaxation of the Monge problem. So there is a linear program of relaxation due to Kantorovich from the 40s, I would say. Nobel Prize in Economics. Okay, um, all right. And, and what's the idea of this uh, uh, relaxation? So people ask me about discrete measures, right? I mean, if you want to make, um, what I present you is something very discrete. Uh, but the problem is that if you have discrete measures, uh, if you have an atom, um, sometimes you want to split an item. What, what do I mean? Um, if your measure is the delta uh, at a point, uh, and you cannot transport to the uniform measure in any segment or to two deltas of, 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 uh, of to a measure of this size because an atom moves to a point, so the delta would move to that point, that's it. You cannot make any, any transportation. This is too rigid. So you want to relax the problem and you want to allow, in place of transport maps that a point moves to a point, you want to make, make, make it a distribution. So each point can distribute its mass wherever it wants. So you want to allow so-called transport plans and not transport maps. Okay, so what do I mean by transport? Uh, plans, there are so-called couplings. Uh, couplings, like the coupling, this is, these are couplings in probability. And, and what, what's the idea? So we let's draw Rn cross Rn. And the idea is that at each point X, you have some distribution here where the points would go that way. And in other words, you have a measure gamma probability measure on Rn cross Rn. And the plan means that if you look at its first marginal, pi one is, is, is pi one of X, Y is X, pi two is Y. If you look at its first marginal, you'd get in U1, and on the second, you'll get, uh, mu two, okay? That, these are all couplings. And the Kantorovich problem is that, um, yeah, well, you look on your, you optimize 
Okay, uh, so so uh, uh, so what's what's the, the new problem? So uh, um, look at the infimum over all measures, all couplings. Ah, I can put i and put i equals one and two, which is two seven. So all, all couplings. And what's the cost of a coupling? If a point goes from x to y, that's what you pay the distance. Okay, distance of x and y. D gamma. Okay, so that's a linear programming relaxation of the uh, of the Monge problem. What's the nice thing about this relaxation? So the space of push forward, the space of X is really complicated. I mean, you had examples, it's not continuous. I mean, yeah, it's, it's pretty hard to understand how masses are rent to push from one level to the other. But gamma is really, I mean, to find couplings, it's so easy. You can just take the product measure, for instance. You can take so many things. And in fact, the space of all couplings is convex. Or transport plans. It's convex, right? I mean, you can take the average of two of them. So you transform the problem, which, you know, not that easy to look at, into a linear, I mean, into, right, in something which looks much, much easier. Optimizing a linear function on a convex set. Okay, and we have the following uh, 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 Kantarovich duality theorem. If you have linear programming, you don't want to look at the dual problem. That's clear. So what's the, Kantorovich duality. So Kantorovich duality theorem. Um, so we have these two measures mu and nu in Rn, uh, absolutely continuous. Let me just add uh, that this thing is, is integrable. I want this thing to be finite. So just assume in addition that this is finite for, for i equals one and two. That's it. And let's denote mu to be the difference, mu one minus mu two. Okay, that's the thing that matters. Somehow the, the intersection of the measure, you don't do any transport. This part would be just stay the same and only, it's, and, and only other points would move if, if, there, if, there, if, there, if there is some uh, common area. Okay, then the claim, is that the the the, the LP relaxation um, in form of all gamma? So this equals some supernum R and cos R. Oh, nobody is paying attention. That's integral of, uh, over this space, right? Okay. Uh, this is, it should equal to some supernum, right? And the dual problem is the following problem. You look at, at all one Lipschitz functions, u on Rn, and you integrate u d mu. Now, okay, one Lipschitz, and you look at the integral of u d mu. Okay, so that's the Kantorovich duality. And let me just add here, although it's more difficult, that's the, and actually I can put, you know, let me get max in this, yeah, yeah, I can max, max in mean much better. It's true. These are attained in other assumptions. And here I can also write, so that's something harder, um, but this is true that it's also the, the same as looking all, all maps. So there is a, a map that attains the coupling. Okay, that's much harder and that's due to Everton and Gangbu in, in 98, I would say. Okay. Okay, so let me explain to you this, this, this convex duality. Um, so, um, okay, um, so first of all, the easy part, actually maybe mostly, okay, easy part is that, is that you know, the soup, I only explain to you the, 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 this thing, not the, Okay, and that's why the soup is smaller than the inf. That's always the easy part. So why? So let's take some take some admissible u, so one if it's function, and some measure gamma coupling, and some coupling gamma. The fact that u is one leap, it means that u of x minus for any two points x and y, this is most the distance. 
So let's integrate with respect to gamma. What would we get? The integral of the distance of x minus y, d gamma x y is at least at least the integral of u x minus u y d gamma. But this is a coupling. So the integral of u of x, any function of x with this measure, is the same as the integral of u d mu one. And the second thing will be minus the integral u of d mu two. So in total, what we get is the integral of u d mu. Okay, so that's the uh, that's the easy part of, 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 of the convex duality. And what remains is to find, to show that there exists. Um, so we need to show there exists, need to find, need to show that there exists some, some u and gamma with equality. Okay, so equality here. When do we have equality in, 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 in this business? If you just look at it, this, the only inequality was that u of x minus u of y is more than distance on the support of gamma. So basically we need that there is equality here on the support of gamma. That's what we should have in mind. Okay, this will be, I do, be very, very sketchy with the, the proof of the other direction. Um, so it goes like that. So take an optimal gamma exists by compactness and, and, and uh, optimality means that we can do something like, you can prove that by, that you can do something like this small heuristics. So optimality implies that for any uh, points, x1, y1, up to, so x and y and in the support of the measure gamma, Okay, so if you want, if, if the optimal plan moves a little bit of mass in x1 to y1, a little bit of mass of x2 to y2, etc. Okay, this is what it does. Uh, then the sum of the distances is minimal in the sense that if you apply some permutation for the y's, it will be worse, it will be more expensive. And in fact, uh, let's just take the cyclic permutation. It's equivalent to taking y plus one, but you can take any permutation. It's the same, modulo n. Okay, so that's this. This is what you get from the optimality. And then there is a, another step, which I'll not do. But it's elementary. It reminds us of if you know Alexandrov's theorem for convex geometry. Uh, elementary argument. So it uses the fact. That you have any some subset of R, this is some subset of R and cos R n with this property. So if from this you can construct a Lipschitz function, one Lipschitz function. Okay, such that um, um, you have for any two points in the support of, of, of the measure. So in that set, uh, u of x minus u of y equals the distance. How do you do that thing? Let me just briefly tell you. So you fix, okay. Why if it's functions in this lecture define up to an additive constant. If you add five to them, nothing changes anywhere because mu uh, of R n equals zero, right? Mu is, so if you add a constant to U, nothing changes. Okay, so let's fix some point uh, X zero and assume that U of X zero is, is zero. And then uh, these requirements give you some, say, for instance, lower bound for the value of u at x. What are the lower bounds? Um, take x zero, which is zero, and then add some, uh, take some point in the support. Um, okay, so let's draw these lines. So you can say that the value, and this is x maybe. So you can say that, okay, I, I make, look at this, this uh, I say that the value of at x zero is zero. I know the value that this, I know the, uh, the value at y1. And then I say, okay, the value here, if I look at, at um, I, I make a chain connecting x0 to x. And for some of the edges in the chain, I have, I have identity because I require this condition. And for some, I just have inequality because of the Lipschitz condition. So each such chain gives us a lower bound or upper, I can do it everyone. So let's say lower bound for, no, let's do upper bound better. Upper bound for the value at x and define x as to be the infimum of all these upper bounds. And this, and this works, basically that's the proof. Okay, I won't say any much about the other direction. 
Okay, so this is about linear programming uh, duality. Okay, now uh, I want to say, to say, to remark something. So you could, there are a few objects, there is the gamma, there is the U, and there is this S here. Um, and um, what, which of them is more, I mean, fundamental? So I mean, that's, I mean, that's a matter of opinion, but let me just remark that, that gamma is not unique, the optimal gamma and S are not uniquely determined in, in any reasonable sense. They're not quite uniquely determined. There are lots of, lots of, of flexibility there. Uh, However, U is somewhat determined. The thing that is determined is U, U is defined up to a constant, so, but grad U is uh, uniquely determined almost everywhere in the support of mu. So somehow, okay, so somehow we know, um, this in the support of the measure mu, we know basically we know the, the, the measure mu. Um, okay. Um, another thing that I want to tell you about the structure of one of its functions, and this would in fact um, would also be useful. This is what you used to prove that that equality there. Okay, so, so as we saw in this, this proof, if we have, equi we have equality, we have u and gamma each other equality, and this means that in the support of mu, we have this, this constraint. So u of x minus u of y is exactly the distance. But now let's, let's observe, so if u is one Lipschitz, and you know that you have two points, x and y, such that the difference is exactly the distance, then I claim that I know how you behaves along the segment connecting them. Why? I claim that U has to go in speed one. Along this segment, because anything, it won't, if it slows down for one second, it won't be, I mean, since it's one lip sheet, it won't be able to, to, to make it and, and, and to have this, uh, um, to have this, um, to reach the value it needs at, at, at the point y. So it goes, well, y, y minus x maybe, if it goes, let's make it this way. Um, okay, because I draw it this way. Right, so it has to go with, with speed one, okay? And that's the definition of such a segment is called the transport ray. So transport ray, um, Okay, maybe I should write it. Um, here. So transport trace is segment along which uh, you goes with speed one, with the maximum speed along which Uh, which is one. And why why do, do is the word transport? I don't I ray I do not defend the word ray, this could be a segment, could be a line, but why 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 the word transport is legitimate? Because we said that um the measure gamma is supported um on, on pairs of points x and one for which we have such equality. In other words, the measure gamma only moves points along a transport ray. Okay, so if it moves, if gamma moves a bit of mass of, from x to y, then uh, x and y belong to a transport ray. Okay, interesting. Now there is the following fact which brings us back to the, uh, this decomposition, the decomposition that we, that we used to this fact is from Evers and Gagbo, the same 98, 99. And that's the following fact. So, uh, okay, let's say after eliminating a set of measure zero, uh, 
from Rn. We have the following, the following is the equivalent relation. So if I define S equivalent to, to Y, if and only if U goes with speed one on the segment from X to Y, then this is an equivalence relation. Uh, then, then this relation is an equivalence relation in Rn. Okay, um, so it means that, uh, and, and what are the equivalence classes? They are the transport rays. The equivalence classes are transport rays and they cover And the union covers the entire support. Bless you. Uh, the support of the measure up to measure zero. Okay, up to. Okay, so let's draw a picture. A transport ray is a segment, right? It, it, it's uh, um, so we have a partition. We have our n. We have the support of mu. Um, Maybe mu supported here. And what we claim is that these segments are disjoint. So it's a kind of a needle decomposition, right? And they cover basically the entire support of, of, of the measure mu. And you know that on each of these segments, you goes with speed one. Okay, so that's a new picture. So let's let's look at, uh, on some examples. The, the, okay, so the examples, um, the same ones that we had earlier. So u of x, uh, y equals u of x in our n equals x1. That's a Lipschitz, one Lipschitz function, right? What are, it trans what are its transport rays? So we need the rays along which it goes with speed one or equivalence classes of this relation. Well, you, you recover the, these parallel lines. On each parallel line to the E1 direction, it goes with speed one, and these are, these are the transport rays, okay? And if you take U, which is the Euclidean norm, where does it go with speed one? This one, if it's function? Well, on this ra radi, radius says, radi, uh, yeah, radi, okay. On this thing, it goes with speed one. So this will be the equivalence relations. Okay, so this is a structure of one if it's functions. Uh, at least in, 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 okay, it could be that everything is a singleton, right? Is our if it's functions like the zero function? which you only get singletons, but in the interesting functions that, that optimize and opti uh, transport, you get segments and these segments uh, cover large thing like the support of mu. Okay, um, so now let's formulate. Uh, so this is very much like the, the convex localization. So let's formulate a theorem, which is the needle decomposition. Um, um, for, for, for the optimal transport. Okay, so so uh, this is, I mean, I, I would make the, the influences of Effort and Yangbu and Feldman and Mekan. Um, and the connection to low concavity is, is, is me. Okay, so so um, that, that's the following theorem. So we have, um, let's say, the lambda would be a reference measure, maybe the Lebeg measure in Rn or, or sorry, it would be also three conclusions. Okay, and then you could match the conclusion to a paper. Okay, Lebeg measure in in Rn, and uh, or maybe a local curve. It's just a local cave. Let's all local cave even probability measure if you prefer. That's and um, so we had this measure mu, which was mu one minus mu two. Remember that thing? So let's it was absolutely continuous. So let's let's write d mu to d lambda is some function f. The positive part of f goes to mu one, the negative part of f goes to mu two, right? And and in total, we know the integral of f d mu is zero. Okay. Uh, 
and we require that, uh, okay, some integrability. Uh, finite, okay. Then uh, you run this, look at the optimization problem. Uh, uh, um, then, uh, uh, then there exists. Then first of all, um, uh, then you obtain the structures that we had earlier for convex localization, but it has some advantages. So first of all, we get uh, uh, in the composition. Um, um, okay, okay, this integration of measure. with respect to the transport rays. Rays of U. So we have, um, a family of measures. So Lambda with the integral over Omega. Omega is the space of transport rays. And and uh, it will be a new omega, new i. I call it i. Okay, is 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 is, is so, so that's the composition. Each each mu i is supported in i. Is log concave. Actually, basically, that's my main contribution. This, this local and uh, and the integral of f d mu i is zero. Okay, that's for for all of them. So we have exactly like the limit object we had earlier. Um, okay, I think that's uh, and and uh, so these are transport rays. So so did I say somewhere? So uh, yeah, omega is transport rays of u. Okay, so this seems very similar to the convex organization method, but there are some advantages and, and, and are kind of useful. So, yes. Lambda, thank you. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Yeah, I mean, that's, this is just me to say that mu of R, so mu is the difference of two measures, and these are probability measures. That's what I wanted to say. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, that's what I wanted to say. Thank you. More questions? Okay, the first remark, so, so we recover commercialization. Okay, that's not a big deal. Uh, but we have something more. We have, uh, but with extra ingredient with this uh, 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 additional information, which is this function u, which is uh, the guiding function u. For instance, it will tell us that the needles are short. I think this answers a question by Ramon from last week, how to construct a composition where the needles are short. So for instance, uh, okay, so the length of the, need of the needles could not be larger than than uh, the scroll of the point of constant. And second remark, all of these base sections are pretty, just Euclidean thing. They would not work on any manifold, but here we only use triangular inequality, basically. This was the only component. So this works on a Riemannian manifolds or Finslerian manifolds or symmetric measure spaces with curvature dimension conditions. Uh, so that's quite useful actually. And, and but what's the concavity? So we have geodesics. Okay, these are the going into geodesics each time. And the, the, the measure is not exactly local key, but it's, it's the following uh, 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 property. So gamma is a geodesic. Let's look at the, the arc length measure and let's look at the density of, of each of the needle with respect to the arc length. So if we denote it by uh, rho to the n minus one, then in place of local concavity, the actual condition that you get is that Rho uh, second derivative in, in the geodesic direction, it's like a Jacobi type inequality uh, plus number kappa over minus one rho is negative, or kappa is the Ricci in this direction. 
And that's useful if you want to prove isoparent inequalities in the low bound of energy curvature or log Sobolev or Poincare or Boom-Likovsky. These things follow here. Okay. Now, all of this was just to introduce the technique. Now I want to show application to convex geometry. The application, as I said, I think is the reverse trigger inequality. Um, so we have the following proposition. Well, again, I put three names. Uh, Boozer, I think, uh, 80. They do, and Emmanuel Milman. Let me check. Um, Milman, I think, is 09. I was already around. But this thing, so 80. Uh, uh, and. 04, okay, 82 and 04, okay, not that bad. Okay, okay, sorry? 09, it could be plus or minus three years, give or take three years, okay. Vitalisa. Okay, so this is the following proposition. So, um, mu or lambda, always confused between, if I, even if, I, let me pass to mu because I see that I confuse between mu and lambda, so it will be no mu. So mu is log concave, uh, probability measure in Rn. Okay, um, some uniform measure on convex set maybe. And let R be some parameter. And let's assume and let's assume that we assume something actually weaker than Poincaré. That's the Emmanuel's contribution, weaker than Poincaré. Uh, let's assume that for any Lipschitz, for any U1 Lipschitz on Rn, or on the support, it's the same, but one Lipschitz, um, you can find some, okay, so there exists some alpha, maybe it's median or something of this sort, such that the average of this one Lipschitz function, after you subtract this constant, so d mu, not d lambda, okay? If I just try this identity in case I confuse. So mu is lambda in this proof. Is it most r? Okay, so why is it weaker than Poincaré? It's weaker requirements and a spectral gap of one over r squared. Why? So what is a spectral gap? You want to say, aha, uh -huh, for any function, it's uh, after we translate it, it's n to norm is bounded times one over L squared, is bounded by n of the gradient. Uh, that will be just some um, remark. Uh, but what we say is that only look at one if it's function. So this is at most one, okay? And and in, in place of the L to norm, just look at the L1 norm. So you require less by Cauchy Schwartz, right? You just require that. Uh, the L1 norm of u up to, up to, up to this translation is, is it most R. That's, that's a big conclusion. But the conclusion is that you, you still get as a perimetry. Then for any measurable S in Rn, and for any epsilon, well, actually only up to R. If I look at the enlargement of S by epsilon, what, what do I gain? What do I gain? Okay, this is S, this is a epsilon. The thing that I gain is at least epsilon over R, that's the right scale, times the minimum of mu of S and one minus, is the point, yeah, one two, so. Okay, so let's prove this uh, proposition. So in particular, take, like, take epsilon to zero, you say that the surface is at least, surface area is at least uh, one over the Poincaré constant, even a bit, a bit better. Okay, so let's, uh, let's move this reverse trigger, uh, let me call it reverse trigger, and let me prove it. So, um, we begin with a set, we get, we have a set S, let's denote its measure, uh, by T. Okay, it is some number between zero and one, because it's probability measure. 
if it's zero or one, okay, zero, one, yeah. And then let's look at, uh, I want to have, to have a function of integral zero, so f would be the, the, the indicator of s minus t. So if this is s, then the function equals one minus t here and t there, right, on s. And the, the main property is that the integral of f equals zero. Right, that's the, the, the main reason to define this function this way. And now let's apply this uh, optimal transport with the Monge cost thingy. So it means that we look at, we have many formulations. So let's look at the one if it's function u uh, with maximal uh, maximizes the uh, integral with respect times f d mu. So if you remember, <laughs> um, f d mu is mu one minus mu two, right? I mean, basically mu one minus mu two in this, in our notation today, now, right now is f d mu. So if it's integral zero, the positive powers go to mu one, the negative powers goes to uh, mu two. Okay, so this, this is, uh, 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 so that's the optimal transport. And we get this transport trace, right? So we get many transport rays. Uh, the, the space of transport rays, let's call it omega. Okay, so these are some trans that cover the support of, of, of F. And we have mu of, for each I in omega. We have a measure, this conditioning on, on, on I. And we know that the integral of F d mu I is zero, okay? Or in other words, this means that, that mu i of, of our set is t times uh, mu i of everything, of i, of rn, of i, okay? What else do we know? Um, the ellipsis function mu that maximizes this thing is, is determined only up to a constant. We can add also a constant. So we can uh, uh, use the assumption that there is some alpha and, and and by the assumption, we know that the integral of absolute value of mu to spec to mu is at most r, right? We, this alpha was already removed. So this, this, this is okay. Okay. And let's recall that what's the meaning of this integration. So this integration means that, for instance, if I want, if I look at the integral, let's look at this function with respect to i on each segment, and then I integrate on all, or the space of all transport rays. So that's the same as the integral of, mu, of u on, on respect to, on all of Rn, which as we said is at most r. And in fact, um, one nice thing is that these mu i are, are determined up to a constant, multiplicative constant. You can multiply by mu i and put this constant at, at nu. So if mu is a probability measure, I can actually normalize that everything is a probability measure. It's not terribly important, but let's do it. So all of the measures here, mu and y are also probability measures. So this is just t in this case. That's a bit, a bit, a bit nicer. Okay, so this means that um, the one if it's function u goes with speed one, but still on most needles, it does not reach value which is larger than r. So let's look at all needles, b would be all needles where the integral of u on this needle is at most two r. Okay, so by Chebyshev Markov or something, you know that this is at least one half. Right, because the total average is, is, is okay. Yes, you know that. Okay, so on half of the needles, we know that u changes by at most uh, um, two r. That's really good because it tells us So since, let's look at the needle i such that this integral is at most 2r. So it means that uh, uh, the, the, the variance, so for any i in b, the measure of mu i is a low concave measure. Okay, that's, we know, in one dimension. With variance, 
at most R square. Okay, we have, I mean, so it means that it looks something like that. So the scale in which it is like R, because we have this one if it's function, and on this interval, it is just, I mean, from if the, if the integral of, of absolute value of t is most r, the variance is most one over r. That's really nice because such measures are very easy to understand. Um, if you take r equals one, then this is a compact space. So local cave measures with variance one and center are compact in L1. So you know that there is a primitive constant which is bounded by some universal constant. And, and for such measures, they are very similar to the uniform measure interval or to, to a Gaussian measure. You, this, for these measures, you know isoperimetry. I will not prove it. It's not that difficult, but we know isoperimetry for these one-dimensional measures, right? I mean, last week, we did some argument in one dimension for pain one measure. This, I'll, I'll leave it for you. In particular, what we know is that um, for such i, if I look at, at the measure of the enlargement, the new points that I get in S, this is at least uh, epsilon over R. So R is the scale. You can think about R equals one here, times the minimum of the measure on, on, only on I of S, and it's one minus that measure. Okay, but this is the same as epsilon R minimum of T and Y minus T because it's the same for all, all that's the nice thing about localization. I mean, this is just t, right? And therefore, if you integrate with respect to, so and this implies, I integrate with respect to, to i on, the, on, the, on, on b, on the set b. So the measure of s epsilon minus s is at least, I mean, if I would take all of omega to be equality, but I only take um, some of, uh, only, only some of the needles, not all of them. Okay, for each thing in B, it is at least, so I get C over two, epsilon R times the minimum of T, one minus T. Okay, so up to this one dimensional fact, which, which I did not prove, I think we, this was a relatively complete proof. Okay, so my time is up, and thank you very much for your attention. That's all for today. Questions? Okay, so see you next week. We'll be Bochner somewhere. <laughs>